In this presentation we'll be showing how to easily create repeated textures and patterns from a C component using the texture area modeling tool that's available in Aspire. Similar to what you see on the screen we'll be able to take a small C component such as these smooth stones that you see on the screen to then scale up to create a large texture or pattern. This versatile feature allows us to quickly change the size and the scale of the seed as well as the spacing and orientation of the pattern. The pattern can also be limited to a boundary and there are 40 textures that have been specifically added for use with the texture area modeling tool. So we'll start by creating a new file. Be 24 in X, 24 in Y and the XY data in the lower left hand corner. The next stage is for us to source a seed component that we can use to create our texture or pattern. So I'm going to go down to the clip art library and I'm going to source from the animal section and scroll down and we will pick an eagle. So I will pick that eagle's head and I'll just drop that now onto the screen. So we can see that now in our 2D workspace. If we tile the windows vertically, we can see the 2D view on the left and the 3D view on the right. And if I have a look at the modeling tab, we can see that we have added a component into level one with the name Eagle Head. I can now select that item from the component tree or from the 2D or 3D view, come up to the texture area component tool and I'm immediately, before I explain any of the parameters, I'm just going to apply that now. So we can see that on the screen where it is tiled, that seed component, which happened to be a single eagle head, and has tiled that up through to completely fill our 24 by 24 workspace. Okay, so now let's start taking a look at some of the options that are available through the form. We'll start at the top with the transform object, which is currently selected. And here you can see the pattern itself is instrumented, so I'm able to um, grab the instrumentation and change the size of the area being textured. You can see that it's simply trimmed the pattern back to the new boundary and can move it in from the side of the screen as well. I can then obviously grab the corner to scale that up and we have simply trimmed that object. I can also move it so I can move the area that is currently being textured. The next option is to edit the texture area component itself. So I'm going to simply select that now and we can see that it's highlighted that seed component and I can change the scale which will in turn change the applied pattern and I can actually move that on the screen and that too will change and as I move that around so the actual effect, the scale is the same but obviously the positioning of the items has changed. Now I'm going to close out of the form and we'll come back and look at the modeling tree and you can see the original C component is still remains but has been grayed out. So let's switch off the pattern and switch back on and you can see the ego head is still there and if I come back in now and reselect the pattern and I can come back up to the texture area modeling tool and I'm able to make further modifications. So until that texture is baked I'm able to come back to the form and make further modifications. So now we're going to take a look at some of the other options that are available on the form. But before I do that, I'm just going to close the form out and delete the pattern that we've already created. So I'm just going to delete that out. I'm going to reselect our seed component, which is our eagle head, come back up to the texture area component tool and just reapply the defaults. Now, as we work down the form, the first section we come to is spacing, where we have the ability to change the spacing in both X and Y. So if we can imagine a border box that around each of the eagle heads, or in other words, a square border box, we'll then be applying a spacing as a percentage of that border box. So if I apply just to say a 10%, I can now just hit space and that will update. You can see that we've shifted all the items to leave a spacing of 10% in between. And if I scale that up to 25%, you can see that's increasing. Similarly, I can do that with a slider. And we can apply the same in the Y direction. I'm just going to reset those back to zero now before we then move down to look at the XY shift. Now this works at looking at 
um, every other row or every other column. So in this particular case we're going to be looking at a shift across in X of every other row. So as I increase this now you'll see the effect. You can see the every other row is being moved across whilst the other one stays in its current position. I'm just going to reset that back to zero and we'll have a look at the Y shift. So similarly I'm just going to use the, the uh, slider and you can see that every other column is being moved up by a percentage of the size of the border box that, pr that is the perimeter around the actual C component. So I'm just going to set that back to zero now. Before we take a look at any further options, let's see how we can use spacing and shifting together to create a cool pattern. So here I'm going to apply 50% spacing in every other column, so every other column will be moved up by 50% of its bounding box, and we're going to combine that with some spacing. So we're going to use a negative spacing in X to get a little bit of overlap in X, and use similarly some negative spacing in Y. And immediately you can see on the right hand side that we've got quite a neat pattern generated by the combination of using the shifting and spacing together. OK, so I'm now going to reset the parameters back to zero. And we'll get back to the state that we started with. We're now going to go down and look at reflections. And as you can see, we're looking really at how four of the donor or seed components work together. And they're currently all orientated in the same direction, but we quite can quite easily flip these. So really we're looking at sort of mirroring. So I'm just going to flip the two on the right hand side of the f patch of four. So I can apply that now and that will turn the heads the other way. And now similarly I can take the top two and flip them round. So they're sort of interlocking there and apply the same to the bottom two. And maybe even look to combine this with some shift and some spacing. So I'm going to apply a shift in Y, so every other column by 10%, which just obviously lifts that up. And now I'm going to move that across with a little bit of negative spacing in X. Let's say minus 20% and apply that and as you can see there we've got a quite a neat effect by using the reflection options in combination with the spacing and shifting. Even after applying multiple modifications through spacing, shifting and reflection we can still come back up and modify the C component itself. So from the top menu I'm going to select Edit Textured Area Component and you can see that the single C component has now been highlighted and instrumented and I can move that around I can now stretch that and it's going to replay all the parameters that are in the spacing, shifting and reflection based upon the change size and position of that C component. So the next stage is to look at how we can create textures within border vectors. So I'm going to close out this form now and delete the two um, items from the component tree. So we're back to our blank workpiece. And I'm simply going to go into the 2D drawing menu and create a ellipse. I'm just going to wind that up and just do it dynamically until I'm happy. Come back down to my clip art library now and pick out a new piece of clip art. So in this particular case, I quite like the frog. So I'm going to move that into the 2D view. And as you can see, it's displayed in the 3D back to our modeling menu now and I can go straight back up to the texture area component tool and I'm going to shift and pick the border vector that I want to apply the texture within and just go straight to apply and we can see that that texture has been applied just within that border vector. Now I can still go in and edit the original C component which I'll do now selecting the edit textured area component in, in this case, the item um, is shown partly within the border vector and part out, but I can obviously, of course, move that, which will um, create a different pattern because I am actually changing the position of that C component. But I can, of course, scale that now and change that. And if I want to move it so it's a bit more central for that center, center frog, then I'm happy there. Now, similarly, I can modify the whole object itself. So I'm going to go into a transform object now and I can pick that 
and move it outside but you can see it's got no relationship now between that and the vector itself the vector was purely used at the start to limit the area onto which the texture is applied okay so I can stretch that now and manipulate it move it around etc but it's got no tie to the original vector the vector just merely limited the original pattern that was created Okay, so we've taken a look at a couple of examples using textures or C components that maybe aren't the most typical. So now let's take a look at uh, some texturing using the specific texture area tiles that have been added to the software, and there are 40 examples. So I'm just going to close this out now and delete the two components to bring us back to our blank page and remove the vector. And we're now going to move across and look under the clip art area and we can see there are texture area tiles which is not to com be confused with the textures non tileable below it and within that now we have 40 different examples of C components that are ideally suited for use with this command they broadly fall into two categories the seamless ones where we plan on not using any spacing or shifting where it is critical for the edges to match left and right and top and bottom we've got examples of this meaning the wall or we've got for instance the egg web the rock grain the scallops the stones etc which are seamless textures and then following on from that we've got the more geometric items such as the bow circle here we've got the diamond plate um, the ornament we have here where the combination of using the spacing and the shifting and the reflection can create some really quite funky different textured patterns okay so let's start by taking one of the seamless textures so I'm going to scroll down now and pick for instance the stones there so I'm going to throw that into the middle of my 2D view and immediately you can see it in the 3D view and whilst that's selected I'm going to come back down to the modeling menu and come straight up to the texture area component tool and immediately apply the current defaults and that's, that's created a seamless pattern throughout the whole of our workpiece and I still have the ability to um, edit the textured area component so I'm going to select that now from the menu and you can see in the bottom left hand side that's now become instrumented so I can actually change the scale of that and even the position so we have some level of modification that we would like to do in order to create the desired effect but I'm unlikely to use either the spacing the shifting or the reflection so it's most likely just the changing the scale and the position of the initial C component okay so let's take a look at using one of the more geometric C components so I'm going to close this down now and just delete out the two components that we have and then come back down to the clip art and in this particular case I'm going to use for instance the dome pyramid scallop so I'm just going to double click and that will bring it into the center of my workpiece and as you can see here is quite an interesting shape we've got this sort of scallop running through the middle of this pyramid so whilst that's selected I'm going to come back up to my textured area component tool and immediately apply the defaults and this is going to create obviously a seamless design even though it's not really designed uh, essentially as a seamless component but it's still a very interesting pattern that we've got there would make a very nice architectural wall piece now we can start to play with some of the sort of spacing shifting reflection here to create some really quite neat designs so I'm just going to start by very simply opening up maybe the spacing there okay and maybe in Y as well okay we can look to maybe change the size of the textured area component so I'm just going to make that a little bit smaller okay I'm just going to set that back down to zero now and so that we've got seamless again and come now down to looking at the XY shift so we can create a bit more of a horizontal tiled look by changing that to be a 50% shift in every other row uh, or set that back to zero now and apply maybe a 50% shift in the Y to create like a vertical tile but I'm going to set that back down to zero now okay and we'll have a look at some of the effects that we create using the reflection and this is where we can see some rapid change in the effects so I'm going to flip the two to the right and reapply 
so it's mirrored the two to the right and by the nature of the shape of this type of component which has been purposely created to allow the flexibility to create a lot of different types of textures is if we flip the top now and so they're all sort of facing inwards now we'll get quite a neat design where you've got this sort of circular effect so one very simple C component can create a quite a large range of different textures by the nature of the way it's been designed okay so let's take a look at another example so I'm just going to close out from here and delete those two components that we currently got in the tree come back to the clip art and I'm going to look at another one here which is the rough weave so I'm going to place that into my 2d view there straight into the modeling tab and up to the texture area component and apply the defaults we can immediately see that these are just uniformly tiled in X and Y no particular pattern at this case but it's we can quickly start to build a weave so I'm going to add in some spacing here so I'm going to go negative 50 percent so we've we bunched that up now and I'm going to similarly give a little bit of a shift in every other column so I'm going to give that a Y shift of 50 percent and you can see that we've actually created a weave from a simple section of weave by the combination of the negative 50% spacing in X, the 50% shift in Y, and the mirroring. We suddenly built a weave from just a small section of the weave. We can, of course, go back and edit the texture area component in order to scale that up. The added flexibility we do have is to go and edit that textured area component. So I can come back in, select that now, and change the size of that initial sort of weave segment and immediately our finished weave pattern will be updated to reflect that. Now let's take a look at another interesting geometric sort of seed component which is the diamond plate. So I'm just going to delete out the two components from the component tree, come back now and I think we'll scroll up and pick the diamond plate. So back into the texture area component tool and I will apply the defaults initially and we can go ahead now and uh, actually apply the same values that we did with the weave and look at the effect we got so that was minus 50 spacing so uh, we're going to sort of do a bit of overlap in X and some row shift in Y and apply and we've got some mirroring to go with that as well and we eventually get this sort of crisscross shape which is quite similar to the weave shape we saw earlier although this is a quite a nice aesthetic shape it's not really the desired effect I'm looking for so I really need to come back now and have a look at the spacing so we do still need spacing here but I'm going to reduce that or sorry increase that from minus 50 percent to minus 33 percent so minus 33.3 and similarly do a 33.3 percent so positive in Y and I apply that now and immediately you get this really nice sort of metal plate look that we've all seen in uh, industrial environments okay we're going to finish by looking at two other key points when using the texture area guide which is how to work when rotating textures and finally how to work with importing images that you might download off the internet etc so I'm just going to close out this form now and delete these two components and go back to our clip art library. I'm going to scroll down and pick out the wave tile that we've got here. So I'm going to double click to bring it into, into the workspace and back down to the modeling and immediately come up and texture the full workpiece with that texture. So we can see there's quite a nice, neat, seamless wave pattern that we've got running across our workpiece. Now, if you want to orientate the wave parallel to the x-axis rather than the y-axis, in other words, rotate it through 90, you can't do that with the edit texture area component editing. You can only change the scale and the position. So in this case, we have to close out of the form, come back down to the component itself, and then transform that component through the standard methods that we've got. So in this case, I'm going to come back up to the rotate selected objects. I can pick that, rotate that through uh, 90 and apply. And as you can see that now, that is running parallel to the x-axis. Now, alternatively, I could actually have manipulate the original texture itself. So I'm just going to close out that form now and delete the texture area so I'm going to delete out that component and we're going to come back to our original wave 
Now, one thing to remember here is you, you cannot just take that and rotate that through 90 degrees, which I'm going to do now. So I'm just going to rotate that, and then I'll go to apply that texture, and apply, and all of a sudden it's not running parallel to the x-axis, it is still running parallel to the y-axis. That because it remembers that the, the original component has gone through a transformation and it still uses the original component, not the original component plus the transformation. So what I need to do is if I delete out that what we just created, take that original item that we've rotated and actually bake that item. So, uh, so essentially it's baking the rotation back into a single state. So I'm going to take that now and come back up to the texture area component and reapply that texture and we now have it running parallel to the x-axis. So any rotation that you do apply, if you want to start with that, you need to bake the component before going to the texture area because it remembers the original component if you don't do that. Finally, let's take a look at how we can work with images that we may have downloaded. So I'm going to close out here and go up to File, New and just create a new 24 by 24 workspace and I'm going to move back down to the modeling tab now and come up to the icon that says create a component from selected or imported bitmap I then can see that I've got a, a stone wall image that I want to read in and reverse engineer basically into a relief so I'm going to read that in immediately let's tile the window so we can see that 3d so you can see the 2d stone wall on the left hand side and the representative sort of 3d wall in the 3d view now we can immediately see it's very very granular there and I, I could ideally need to apply some smoothing. Uh, before I do that I'm just going to change the scale because it's the scale is a little bit out of proportion for the size of my workpiece and I'm now going to move back up and apply the smoothing before I actually go ahead and do the tile. So I'm just going to leave it fairly crude smoothing okay so I'm going to OK that now and come up to so I'm going to need to select the uh, seed component back up to the texture area tool and apply that throughout the work piece and immediately you can see it's showing a seam so what should be seamless is actually showing as a seam and if you have also an, a look in the 2d view you can clearly see that there is a seam between what should be a seamless tiled model and that's because we've actually smoothed the edges which has changed that ability for one tile to butt up against another. So I need to close out that now. So I'm going to undo everything now. And we've got back to our original component. Um, I'm just going to change the size again. And we're now not going to apply the smooth at this stage. We're going to come straight up to the texture area tool and apply that close we can actually see from the 2d image that we've got a really nice seamless tiled effect and I can go ahead and apply the smoothing and I'm just going to tone that right down so we get a just a, a, a gentle smooth across and we can immediately see there if I, if I just okay that now that we've got a beautiful tiled stone wall where you wouldn't know that that was a series of tiled seed components. And with that, that brings to a close this presentation which has explored all the options uh, within the texture area component tool and considerations that need to be made when using it.